In this video, we're going to review some distributed computing models. By far, the most common distributed computing model is the client-server model. In this model, you have a client that is going to request services provided by another computer, the server. The server typically sits idle waiting for a request. The client initiates the request. Typically, it does this by first establishing a new connection with the server. And if I give you five seconds, can you tell me what protocol it's using if it first establishes a connection? Five seconds starting from now. That would be TCP, our connection-oriented protocol. So the client requests a service and the server responds to the request. This is the default behavior for just about any web page, email service, and download. And of course, it's not restricted to just communication between computers. The same thing happens all the time with your mobile phone, your tablet, and maybe even your watch. Almost all applications today are internet applications. All the applications in your phone are, all the applications in your tablet are, and most of the applications on your laptop probably are too. Sometimes the client-server model is called the two-tier model. There are other models that are variations on this theme. The most popular of these is the three-tier model. In the three-tier model, you have a presentation tier, which displays some information. This tier effectively acts as the client. The end user interacts with this presentation tier. For example, this may be a display on your smartphone, and you might press a button on the display that sends a request to a server somewhere in the cloud. Or it may be a link on a web page, and you click the link which also sends a request to a server somewhere. The logic tier is the tier that figures out how to handle that request. It's typically on the server side of things. Often, that request involves accessing the data tier, either because the end user is requesting information from the data tier, or something that the end user did will modify the data tier. In either case, modifying the data tier also results in an update to the presentation tier, an update to what you see on your screen. Now, to many of you, this should be sounding familiar because it looks like a common high-level design pattern that goes by another name. And if I give you five seconds, can you tell me what that pattern is? Five seconds starting from now. Okay. This three-tier model is actually the model, view, controller pattern. And when this pattern is used in a distributed environment, like over the internet, the network is usually here. Just as this three-tier model is an extension of the client-server model, multi-tier models are an extension of this one. And they occur when the logic tier becomes very complex and has to be split into multiple tiers by itself. The last distributed computing model we're going to talk about is the peer-to-peer -peer model. In the peer-to-peer -peer model, all the nodes in the network, and in this case the nodes are computers, all the nodes in the network share resources with each other without any need for some kind of central control. Since all the nodes are effectively equal to each other, they're considered peers, hence the term peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, to join a peer-to-peer -peer network, a machine has to agree to share some portion of its resources with the other peers. What it gets in return is access to the resources of all the other machines. Now, peer-to-peer -peer networks have lots of uses, but they became popularized around the turn of the century by the Napster file sharing system. 
Napster focused on the sharing of MP3 files, music files essentially, and the peer-to-peer -peer architecture of the application made it incredibly easy to share those files with anyone else on the network and share them for free. With a client server architecture, there is one central repository that stores and distributes the files. If the music industry found out that a server was giving away music for free, it could simply sue the owner of that server. But with Napster, every computer was a server and every computer was a client. At its peak in February of 2001, Napster had 25 million users worldwide. Napster traffic was overloading the networks in some college dormitories. It was kind of amazing. The recording industry was getting too much bad press by going after music fans for sharing their music illegally, so it started going after Napster. And it won. Napster had to pay the recording industry millions and millions of dollars, and the company ultimately had to file for bankruptcy. All because peer-to-peer -peer networking, where everyone is a client and everyone is a server. But although the original Napster is gone, peer-to-peer -peer applications are here to stay. BitTorrent is the current giant in peer-to-peer -peer or P2P communications. The company BitTorrent maintains the BitTorrent protocol. A little over 10 years ago, over 50% of internet traffic was due to peer-to-peer -peer networking. If I give you five seconds, what do you think that percentage is now to the nearest, say, 10%? Five seconds starting from now. Well, I'll give you a hint. Netflix is not a peer-to-peer -peer system. And YouTube is not a peer-to-peer -peer system. Together, Netflix and YouTube account for close to 50% of internet traffic, and most of that is Netflix. Peer-to-peer -peer traffic makes up about 10% of all internet traffic. Interesting. Okay, that's it for distributed computing models. In the next video, we'll talk about sockets and ports.